Hi there YouTube, it's Sebastian from SDC Canada here again. Today's video we are going to take a look at calculating future value and present value. Future value calculations allow us to see what our money will be worth a day uh, sometime in the future from now and the present value function allows us to see how much money we would have to put away today in order to uh, realize a future value number. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a blank workbook here. There's nothing to download. Everything's pretty straightforward. I am going to zoom in a little bit because we don't need the whole worksheet. We just need an area of it. So I'm going to zoom it in so it's a little bit bigger for you. I'm also going to label the top A1. I'm going to put in here uh, FV. The first calculation we'll do is future value. Now in order to calculate future value, you require some pieces of information. First of all, you're going to need to know what rate of return on average you will have over the period of time in which you want to calculate the future value. The other thing you need to know is, of course, the time. When is the time? How long into the future are we planning to see how much our money would grow to? Uh, the, the example I normally give to my students is we want to retire in, let's say, 25, 30 years, and we're going to start putting some money away, and we want to know what will we retire with? So we'll take a look at that in a second. The other thing you need to know is your PMT. You are going to make a payment into your future value. Whether you're going to do that once a year, once a month, once a week, it doesn't really matter. But the most important thing is this is an ongoing payment and it should stay steady across the uh, term. The other thing we need to know is, is there a present value? in play? Is there a lump sum of money in which you're going to invest one time right at the beginning? So that's the present value. Very important. And at the bottom here we will type future value. And I'm going to make this a little bit bigger and we should be good to go. If you were investing your money what kind of rate would you assume that you would get for your investments? If it's RRSPs, maybe you're doing some real estate investing, I don't know, stocks, fancy diamonds, gold, whatever it is, you need to know what you believe would be the average rate of return. Now, obviously, if you're buying a mutual fund, for example, and it's a 30-year period, 30-year term, you can expect that the mutual fund is going to go up, in value, you're going to get a return maybe one year, 12%. There will be years where you only get 2%. There could be negative years as well. But what we're looking for here is we're looking for the average rate of return over the period of time. I'm going to say a, a really good benchmark to go with is 6%. So I'm going to type in 6%. And you need to make sure you do that 6 and the percent sign. I'm going to go based on a 30-year term. So let's say we're going to retire in 30 years from now. And that's what we're going to do. Put it there. The cool thing is, once you build this formula right, once you build the spreadsheet correctly, you can modify these numbers and have the system auto-recalculate. So if you want to know, okay, now I only have 20 years, what's going to look like? All you have to do is change the term number in B4 from 30 to 20, and the future value at the bottom will auto-recalculate. I stress to my students all the time, it's very, very important how you build your formulas. Use cell referencing, because when you don't, if you use hard-coded numbers, that's when you run into problems. Okay, so payment. This is what we're going to put into our investment, uh, like I said, weekly, monthly, yearly. It's important to know the frequency of your payment because everything relies upon that. To simplify things, I tell my students, let's imagine that we are going to calculate a future value for retirement and all we're going to do is we're going to put in money at the end of every year. So every year we're going to put in, let's say, I don't know, $5,000. Let's do that. So $5,000 at the end of every year is going to go into an RRSP. It's going to uh, hopefully grow over the 30 year period and it's going to amount to something when you retire. The present value, I, uh, I like to joke around with this one. I say, oh, you know what, someone you didn't know sent an email from Africa or from Europe or Asia that they died, some distant relative, and they left you some money. And it just coincides with the time you start investing into your future, into your retirement. So I like to joke around about it, but realistically, you go with an amount, if at all, that you have. If you have $1,000 in the bank that you could put in one time right at the beginning, then you do it. If you got nothing, you don't put anything there. You just leave it at a zero value. 
I'm going to assume that, you know what, you guys work full time, you've been saving some coin, you got about $10,000 in the bank in which you would like to put in only the first time at the beginning of your future value uh, calculation. So at the beginning of the term, the 30 years. With this information, we are now ready to go find the function, insert the function, and calculate our future value. What we need to do is make sure that cell B8 is active. So right here, B8 is good to go. Then we're going to click on Fx, which is insert function. And if you notice, my list doesn't have future value in there. So I need to search for it. So I'm going to type Fv up here at the top. And then I'm going to click go. Fv, there it is. And uh, I always joke around, it's not Farmville, it is future value. And there we are. So we click on it and we click OK. Perfect. So now what we're dealing with is the dialog box and it's saying, okay, what is your rate? And a lot of students, they get all excited, they start typing 6%. No, it's not that. We want to use the cell reference as I've pointed out earlier. So in the rate here, we're going to then click cell B3. Now keep in mind, our payments are happening yearly. Therefore, there is no requirement to change the rate into a monthly rate or a weekly rate or anything of that nature. This is strictly uh, a yearly payment. Therefore, our rate is based on yearly, average yearly. We leave it alone. The next thing we're looking at is the term. The term is found in B4. Perfect. Again, don't have to multiply it by any frequency. This is the frequency. There are going to be 30 payments at $5,000 each our payment. Now, this is a little bit tricky and, and students ask me all the time, sir, sir, you know, wh wh why does it have to be this way? And the way I'm referring to is, uh, it has to be a negative payment. And uh, we're going to do that. So we're going to go negative and then click the payment, which is B5. And then your present value, which remember is your lump sum, and it tells you right here. It says present value in this calculation or the lump sum amount that a series of future payments is worth now. So basically, if you do not have money to put away right now a lump sum, you leave it blank or put a zero. In this case, though, we do have a lump sum, and it also has to be negative. So just keep in mind, when you're doing a future value, both your payment and your present value should be a negative. And we're going to click OK. There we go. So B6, perfect. So that's what we got. We got rate in B3, the term in B4, the payment and our present value, both negative, B5 and B6. Now for type, this is just asking when are you making the payment, at the beginning or the end. And for the sake of argument, we are making our uh, payments at the end of each year, so at the end of each period. So we leave that blank. And you'll notice there's a formula result down here. It's looking exciting. Let's click OK. Beautiful. So basically what this is showing us is that if we were to put in $5,000 a year for 30 years at 6% rate of return with a lump sum of $10,000 one-time payment, we will have a future value of $452,000. Now some of you may look at the number and say, okay, that's cool. Or some of you may be, wait a second, that doesn't work out. That doesn't add up. Well, let's take a look. In A9, I'm going to type the following, cost. And to the right, I am going to calculate how much did it cost us to make that $452,000. And the cost is really simple. It's just a basic formula. I'm going to do it. It's going to be equals your payment, which is B5, multiplied by your term, which is B4, but you also have to add in your original present value, so plus your present value. When you press enter, you're going to see that it cost you $160,000. And this is what happens. The students see this and they're like, whoa, wait a second, wait a second. You're telling me you're going to give me nearly $300,000 for free? That's impossible. That doesn't work, but it does. And the reason why it works is because of compound interest. Basically, if this was 10%, your money would double every 7.2 years. It's 6%, so it's not going to double as often. 
what is important to understand when you're calculating future value is that term. This is the most important factor. It, it cannot be replaced. If you have less term, you need to invest more money. Bottom line is, to find out what constitutes as free money, we're going to go down here to A10, type in free dollars, and we are going to simply take our future value amount minus our cost. So as I said, it should be roughly or very close to uh, $300,000. $292,000 to be exact, for free. Very, very important. Uh, it's a life lesson more than it is an Excel lesson. Uh, reality is you should be saving your money and you should be investing it and you should be looking forward to retirement like most of us. Before I get into the uh, present value, which I've typed here in D1, I wanted just to, to display what I was talking about with regards to when you build the formula correctly, you can then change one or two different variables and see what happens. Joking around, I said, you know, 10%, your money doubles every 7.2 years. Let's change that 6 to a 10 and see what happens. The cost of to from you or, or to you is still $160,000 because it's still 30 years, your payment's 5000 and your lump sum is 10000 But look at the difference when you increase your rate, 10% versus 6. You're looking at $996,000 and $836,000 is for free. Now, is 10% realistic? Well, it depends on what you're investing in. Mutual funds, some have performed better than that. Uh, real estate in Toronto, for example, the last, what, six, seven, eight years, we were averaging 10% a year. So basically, there are good investments out there. You just need to know what you're doing. Always feel comfortable with the investment. So I'll change that back to 6%, and there you go. And you can see it's substantial, right, from 6 to 10. The next thing we're going to do is we are going to do our present value. So we need rate again, term. We are going to need PMT. And we are also going to need to know what is our future value. What is the amount of money we want in the future? And then we can calculate what our present value will be. So basically, the present value calculates how much money do I need to put today, uh, put away today, uh, for a lump sum value to get us a specific future value that we are hoping for. In example one here, we calculated that uh, we would generate $452,000 in a future value. Let's say we wanted, uh, instead of 452, we wanted an even 500,000, right? So what do we need to be able to put away now to make that future value $500,000? Always watch your zeros. Sometimes uh, they look the same. It's uh, 500,000 right there. So this is the most important part. You got to say to yourself, all right, in the future, I want to retire with $500,000. How much do I need to put away today? Well, you can assume that your present value number will be greater than $10,000 because as you can see here, uh, $10,000 only brought us up to 452. Let's keep everything the same. So 6% for the rate, the term is going to be 30 years, and your payment's going to be $5,000. The difference here is that we are going to calculate what PV is based on this end goal, this $500,000. Once it's all built, ready to go, we can then go to insert function here, the FX button, and we can click on, if it's not there, search for it, PV. Don't forget to click go. So we're looking for the present value, then click OK. Dialog box looks very similar to what we saw on the future value side, but as you can see, we are calculating present values right here in the left corner. Rate again. We're going to click on E3 for this one. Number of periods is going to be E4. Now, here's the difference between um, future value and present value. When we did the future value calculation, I told you that both your payment and your present value had to be uh, negative. When you're calculating the present value, 
you can get away with making only one of them negative. You have to make one of them negative. It doesn't really matter which one because they will give you the same result. Just one result will be negative, one result will be positive, but the number will be identical. So it is up to you to choose which one it is that you want to make negative. So for this example, I'm going to say I'm going to make the payment negative. So I'm going to put a negative symbol in the payment then I'm going to click the payment. Then I'm going to go to the future value section and I'm not going to make it negative. I'm just going to leave it positive and I'm going to click on it here. Perfect. And then we're going to click OK. Basically what it's saying is in order to make this 500,000, this future value to make it $500,000, we would need to put in $18,230.91. If that seems really crazy or really high, if you want to verify it, simply go back to your future value side, change the number to 18-23091 and see if you get an even future value of 500000 Perfect. So we've just verified that this formula is correct and that would be the result. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, this one is a little bit tricky. It's one that takes practice, but it is very beneficial to you, uh, both Excel skills and life skills. If you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to leave me a comment below. Please don't forget to subscribe.